All right, wanted to help you welcome, welcome our next speaker to the stage. Her name is Karen Dice. Karen is a 28 year, maybe even more now, veteran of the mortgage industry. She is the founder of Mortgage Girlfriends, Officer Loan Off, uh, also Loan Officer Magazine, and Apartment Toolkit, which I actually just learned today that you created Apartment Toolkit. And I've been using that thing for like 10 years, maybe longer now. So that's awesome. awesome. Back when I was in real estate, you know, we were rocking Apartment Toolkit back in the day. We've made tons of money with that thing. So appreciate that. So everybody, welcome uh, Miss Karen Dice. Thanks for being here with us today. Hey Nick, thank you so much for asking me. I really appreciate it. So my topic today is how to create three different um, sales and marketing strategies that can be done virtually or when this pandemic is over, can be done you know, manually. So hey, you mentioned I started in the mortgage business, had been in it for 28 years and been through many, many crises. And what I noticed or what I realized was that if you look at it as a crisis, it's going to be for you. However, I always looked at it as an opportunity. So in 1984, I was transferred to Houston, Texas, the oil crisis, interest rates were 14%. However, what was happening, all the homes were going into foreclosure and, and the agencies would allow investors to go in and buy 10 to 12 properties and we got to finance them. So we made a ton of money financing uh, group foreclosures. Then the dot-com bubble came and the government said, okay, we gotta get people invested in real estate. So they changed the capital gains exclusions from 125,000 to 500,000, again, investment properties. And, I'm, and I have to say that it's not, it wasn't my main focus, but it was one of my niches, which then uh, leapfrogged into you know, regular purchases, referrals, and that thing from real estate agents. Then we got rid of the, you know, the 2008, 2009. And the opportunity there was, is that we got rid of all the loan officers who couldn't fill out a 1003, right? So, <laughs> and so now we have an opportunity to change the way that we do business and operate some of our business virtually and also streamline it. So when I speak at mortgage events and I coach uh, women loan officers, I am still an advocate that regardless of what's happening, that you still have to market, you have to in implement sales and marketing strategies. And I hear people telling me, well, you know, no, every, nobody wants to do that. They just want to sit at home and enjoy their family. Yeah, they still want to have you market to them. A long time ago, Nick, somebody told me that you could be the best loan officer in the entire world, but if nobody knows about you, nobody remembers your name, you're gonna go broke. So with that in mind, I wanna to, I want to kind of give you a little, some things to think about when you're putting together a sales and marketing strategy uh, or wanting to connect with real estate agents. First of all, Real estate agents and consumers, anything you put out there, want you to be relevant. What's happening now? What's happening to them? Uh, they want information from you. They want that personal connection. They want you to be authentic. I loved your little video. That's an authentic you. I love that. Um, they want to refer you. And they also want to connect and they want to engage with you. So my three topics today um, that you can, as I mentioned, that you can use can be done virtually or when this whole mess is all over, you can uh, you know, convert it. But the, again, I know a lot of the speakers have said, have said this, the word is consistency. You have to be consistent. So the first strategy, Nick, is the annual real estate review. And the concept here is, is to keep your uh, clients and up to date, updated on the current value of their home using information supplied by the realtor in the form of a comparative market analysis. And so here's the system. You can start, um, if, you haven't, if you haven't done this before, then I see you're shaking your head, you must have done something like this. Um, that you pick one or two a week to uh, per, uh, go to your database, pick one or two people a week, 
contact the real estate agent that sold them the home. I'm hoping that's in your database as well. And ask them to provide a, a comparative market analysis. What you're doing there is you are now connecting the real estate agent back with the consumer, providing them inf and providing them information. Um, when you contact the real estate agent, tell them that you want a comparative market analysis. Tell them the reason why that you want to provide them with the current value of their home. If you have, if you're, if you're want to do this right now, also go back to your database and look at loans that closed 11 months ago, not a year ago, but 11 months ago, because you need about 30 days. Real estate agents are not always gonna hop on and give you a, a comparative market analysis just because you want it that day. So give them about 30 day time period. Ask the agent also to provide recent home sales in the county, recent home sales in their neighborhood, and then also listing. Um, also, one of the things, uh, hot uh, rule and regulation little thing here is that be sure when you send out that comparative market analysis that you have a disclosure that says this is a comparative market analysis it's not an appraisal and it is not an indicative value of your home uh, for mortgage purposes so be be sure and put that in there because people are going to take that as fact that that's what their house is, is valued at um, also state that you're going to do this annually, put it in your database that you know every year that you're going to send out this market analysis. And this is the way, again, to keep in touch, providing them information. Uh, provide a picture of yourself, your real estate agent, and your contact and the contact information. And then also in that cover sheet or letter, um, depending on the value uh, offered to refinance, or maybe they're thinking of buying another home, they've had enough equity in that house, and they need to get pre-approved. So several opportunities for loan officers. So let's say that the real estate agent who is, had sold them the initial home is no longer in business. This is a huge opportunity to introduce your client to either one of the agents that you do business with now or that you would like to, uh, like to know and, you're, and you're, you're making that introduction. So you're building up a client database somewhere in the future for the agent that you, you do business with or the or new agent that you wanna know. Based on the value, there's the opportunity for refinancing or possibly selling their home. And it may not happen right away. It may happen two or three years ago but from now, but that's always in their mind. If the value is lower, Tell, send it anyway. They need to know that. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it's out there. So even if it's a lower valuation, I recommend that you send it out. And then market it. Uh, post on their Facebook page that you're going to be emailing them a, uh, you know, comparative market analysis, their annual real estate review. Maybe when you send it in an email, you do a little bomb bomb video or something like that. Um, you know, you might want to just do a whole video on it, you know, just like we're doing now. I just want to let you know, and this is Mary Jones, put her on the, on the Zoom video, and then you two talk about the comparative market of, or the value of their property and the things that are happening in the real estate industry. So what you're doing is you're getting back in touch, you're providing information, you're making the connection, and you're engaging all parties, all three of you are engaged. And again, it's relevant and it needs to be consistent if you're going to do this. So the next one is Facebook posts. Okay, so we know that this is always done virtually, but this is going to be a little bit different. So I review the Facebook posts of the people that I coach and I see that maybe they're sharing a listing, but they just share a listing. They don't say anything about the listing. Like maybe it's an open house. I, you know, I thought these three, you know, this house was really cool. I love this neighborhood. Um, maybe they're, they told a joke or posted a video. That's fine, but tell the reason why that you're posting it, why it's important to you. Maybe they shared something, maybe they made a comment. And what I'm saying here is that uh, I, I want to change your thinking about posting comments on Facebook. 
Uh, it's okay to do what I just mentioned, but I would keep those to a minimum. My belief is that the only reason that a loan officer should use Facebook, Instagram, social media is to get engagement, provide information, make personal connections, get referrals, get leads, and get closed loans. Otherwise, you're spending your time on social media doing the fun things, which is always nice. It's always good for a five minute break, but why not use it to put money in your pocket? So one of the best ways to get engagement is to ask questions. So I'm gonna share with you six questions that have been tested and have been guaranteed to get results uh, get engagement in, the, in connections with real estate agents and even face to, even virtual or face-to-face -face meetings. So um, one other thing, in order to get engagement, Nick, back me up on this, you need to get followers. I mean, nobody's going to talk to you if you don't have anybody following you. So um, what I recommend you do is, if, if, if possible, set up a realtor group. And I know a lot of loan officers have their clients, their family, their friends, their real estate agents all on one page. That's okay, but in order to get those leads, if you're going to market to real estate agents, I recommend that you set up a, a real estate group. And I'll give you an example of what just happened to somebody. So the first question, if you want to kind of write this down or mark it on your you know, laptop or whatever it is, what would you say is the most difficult part of your job? What would you say is the most difficult part of your job? Now, if you're posting this question on your regular profile page or your business page, you need to preface it by saying, question for my real estate agents, especially if there's a big group, because what happens there is you just want to identify the real estate agents to answer it, and you don't want family or friends to say, yeah, I didn't, like, I didn't like my boss at the factory or whatever it might be. So you're targeting it to the real estate agents. But if you have a group, you don't have to do that. So let me tell you a story about this. One of the uh, people that I coach, <clears throat> her husband passed away, and she had to move to another state for her family to take care of her child. She didn't know any real estate agents in this new city. So she set up, we had her set up a group she had 30 agents that she invited, or she invited a lot of agents, but 30 agents joined a group and she made this post. She had seven responses. Some of the responses were like, um, I need to know more about USDA loans. I wanna know about, I wish I had my, set up my database sooner. I wanna know about that. Somebody talked about sales and marketing. So what she did we, is that on the comment section, she said, I'm going to private message you, check that out. And then she sent them a private message that says, hey, I'd like to, to meet with you or sit down with you and talk about USDA loans. Today, this was eight months ago, she is getting leads from three of those real estate agents. So it's kind of a cool story on how you go through the process of getting their comments, and then somehow meeting with them and then turning it into leads and closed loans. The next one is, what's the number one challenge that you're experiencing today in promoting your business virtually? What's the number one challenge in promoting your business virtually? So you're gonna get a ton of comments on that. Um, next one, have you ever thought about buying rental properties? It's going to be a yes or no answer. And the people who answer yes, hey, I'm going to send you a private message. You send them a private message. When can we talk about buying a rental property? Let me to explain the rules and regulations for the different, uh, you know, Fannie and Freddie. And there are some programs that will allow you to use your commission towards either the down payment or the closing costs. So when would you like to talk? So again, they may not end up buying rental properties, but you've made that connection. Next one, why did you become a realtor? Why did you become a realtor? There's a motivation there that they became a real estate agent. And so look at all of the comments. Be sure to comment back. I have uh, seen where the questions, uh, one, one 
of my one of my coaching clients received like 67 responses and didn't reply to any of them which didn't make, make kind of okay and i kept pming her saying you need to reply you need to reply she goes i'm too busy okay then don't post it if you're too busy however after you get most of the comments from the real estate agents on that one question post why you got into the into the mortgage business so you're now building that relationship and getting that personal connection okay what next one what frustrates you the most about the mortgage side of a purchase transaction what frustrates you the most of the purchase side of a mortgage transaction so you all know that there's a lot of misinformation out there the realtors don't even understand it so i mean they could say something like i don't understand why i got a low appraisal and there's your opportunity to private message them or even explain through the whole group of you know how that happens and how you can appeal a, 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 an appraisal if you can nowadays and those types of things. So um, it also gives you a chance to see where they're where they're, where they have the misconceptions and you can use that to repurpose it for a different informational posts. Okay, the last one what's the one thing you wish you would have known before you got into the real estate business what's the one thing you wish you would have known before you got into the real estate business so this is really cool because they're going to come up with well i wish i would have known the hours and i wish i would have known the mortgage process or you know whatever it might be but the cool thing is is you can compile the list of what i wish i would have known put all of their comments, give them credit for their comments and repost it or send it out in an email. So people don't, so the real estate agents realize that they're all in the same boat. They all had issues getting into the real estate business. So, um, you know, of course, again, reply to their comments, uh, set up, see if you can set up meetings with them, P the, PM them, uh, explain, you know, give them, give them information. And again, compile all of their answers and use these answers, use this information to repurpose it for, you know, on your Facebook, your Instagram, maybe even write an article about it. So that's it. That's it about Facebook. Okay. Virtual meetings for real estate agents. Now, how many of you have done sales meetings and lunch and learns? Maybe you talk to a networking group. And this idea that I'm going to present to you is a little unique because you're providing relevant information for speakers who are outside of the real estate industry. We usually bring in, you know, an appraiser, a credit repair person, which is, you know, all said good, good and well. However, how about using people that you know that are experts uh, in, in, for, from your networking group, maybe people that you've done loans for, uh, and I'll give you a, a couple examples in a few minutes. This would be a Zoom meeting, hold it for about a 20 minute time period, or when this whole thing goes away, you may invite them to a round table discussion by invitation only to listen to this featured speaker. Um, okay, one of the more popular ones that I know that I've, I've been coaching on is asking a real estate attorney to provide a, 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 a um, talk on how a property goes into foreclosure. Here's what happens in reality. A real estate agent lists the property knowing that it's two or three months delinquent, and they think they're gonna sell it right away. Well, it doesn't sell. Six months later, eight months later, it goes into foreclosure. Now what the hell are they gonna do? Who's the seller of the property? Who's the servicer? That type of thing. So by asking an attorney to explain how that goes into foreclosure and how it would affect one of their listings was a huge, um, it was attended by a lot of people and it was a huge, huge topic. Another one, invite a home builder uh, to do a, a, to, to do a um, uh, you know, a, a, a virtual meeting. 
Okay, another thing that happens, real estate agents show the house to 20, 30 people. They go, yeah, just go on to the home, build. you know, they, they end up with the home builder. And sometimes the real estate agent doesn't even know that. Sometimes the builders will, will pay them a referral fee for referring to the home builder. But most real estate agents don't know how a home is built. And one of my specialties, Nick, when I was in the business was new construction. So we did hold a lot of seminars for real estate agents on how the home is built, how do you find a lot, how do you, you know, perk test a well and septic, all those types of things. Two things happen there. First of all, the home builder is being introduced to a group of your real estate agents and vice versa, this is your opportunity to get your foot in the door with the builder because you're now facilitating referrals to them. Okay, next thing, uh, business planning classes. Um, I recommend that you hold these in October or November, but in the business planning classes, I'll tell you one of the uh, women that I coached went online and found a business planning coach that charged her, charges like $2,000. She negotiated $250 for her real estate agents, had 12 agents attend the business planning class. Um, the um, business coach provided all the forms also, so this was part of it. And the whole thing that, the, the, the whole emphasis from the business coach was like, yes, I get to meet new people that I had not known before. In fact, in this business planning class, Nick, um, there were four agents that showed up for this business planning class that never gave her any business. Now they are, but they aren't. And this also gives you the opportunity to, after the business planning, planning class is over, to meet with them and contact them and follow up on their business plan on a regular basis. Um, uh, same thing with a motivational speaker, Google it. There's a lot of most motivational speakers that would be thrilled to just share you know, 20 minutes of their topic hoping that somebody would hire them or they work for a company that might hire them. Um, next one, social media expert, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, each one individually. Now I'm not talking about what to post on the page. I'm talking about how to set it up, how to do the about me page effectively, um, how to get, you know, set up groups, the, the, the basics. Um, I want to give everybody a tip in regards to setting up your social media pages, especially in the About Me section. Always list your cities and states and counties of your lending area. And the reason that you are doing that is the, for search engine optimization. Think of what a client's, what a consumer is going to do. Mortgage loans in Frisco, Texas, and they're going to type that in. If you have that, all those states and, and cities in your social media pages, you're more likely to show up on the first couple pages of Google or Yahoo or whatever it is. Um, and be sure to, if you're going to do, if you're going to do the city, just don't do the city like Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, because there's, there's a ton of Grand Rapids out there. So be sure to add the state every single time and the counties. Now I was in the area called, it was between, Michigan and Indiana, and it was called Michiana. And so I had Michiana all over the place as well. Okay, this is huge right now. A CPA and how real estate agents can save their money on their income taxes. They probably are going through that right now. They either have to owe a ton of money or they see where they you know, could have written something off that they didn't keep track of. Um, so this would be absolutely huge. And especially with the tax laws continuing to change, um, right now to set up a virtual meeting with a CPA would be great, especially if they have some uh, slides. And then I'm going back to the, getting a real estate investor who is actually an investor, one of their uh, peers that invests in real estate and talks about how they invest in real estate, how they find properties, the uh, rate of return, how they set the rents, all that type of all that type of thing. So that's pretty much it. Um, Nick, I would like to do a couple things. If somebody would like, and I'll send this to you, if somebody would like the um, cover letter for the annual real estate review, and, and it's been vetted by an attorney, I'll go ahead and send that to you. And I also have a list of 29 different virtual sales meetings 
that I could send to you too. So I'd like to yeah. offer that to the group. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. And if you guys want a copy of Karen's two giveaways, her annual real estate review cover letter and the virtual classes, drop me a hook me up, Karen, in the comments. And we're going to make sure everybody gets taken care of. Okay. I'll make sure that okay. we, you know, I'll get Robert, my assistant to give everybody uh, those two things that comments hook me up, Karen. And uh, man, thank you so much. That was, that was amazing content. I know the comment, the comments were going fire the whole time. Really Sarah, cool. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, Victoria, Peggy, Stuart, Anna, Scott joins. He, Scott, really appreciate you, Scott, for posting all the questions. So as you were giving your six questions and going through that, Scott was making sure everybody okay, could good. get those in the comments and stuff. Awesome, so, good. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys for that. Yeah, thank you so much. That was amazing content. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Nick, thanks for the invitation. I appreciate it. Have a all good right, day. Jen. We'll talk to you later. See you. Okay, bye. So the one word I would use to describe the Legion of Loan Officers is confidence. I would say epic. It's epic. Brilliance. The minds of the people that are in the Legion of Loan Officers are absolutely brilliant. One word, mind blowing. Freedom. Freedom. It's given me so much more freedom with my time, um, with the way I conduct my business and my finances. The confidence that I have now, as opposed to when I started, is just, it's off the charts. I'm comfortable being me. I'm comfortable uh, putting myself out there. Despite the fact that we're all in the same industry and a lot of us are in the same state, there's no competition. It's nothing but respect and leveling each other up. So that's epic. Like, you're not having to chase the business down. You, you have built relationships, partnerships with agents, and that is worth its waiting for.